How's the bike looking, Con? I'm ready to go if you are. Yeah, almost. Need to do some packing. Type 1 diabetes, so I need to keep some sugar on me, keep some carbs on me, keep some insulin on me. Let me grab that stuff, record for this video, and then we'll head out, okay? I'll go do the packing. You know I don't like cameras. Yeah, fair enough. You have a habit of running from your problems. Go ahead and grab this stuff for me. You're a really short prick, you know that? If I'm a prick to you, you should hear me rant about this next subject. No, I'm going. I don't care enough. Alright, I can see this relationship will be mutually spiteful. I think I'm gonna like you. Anyway, I've done a lot of videos about the Imperium and only did, I think, four videos about aliens? And they were all about the tabletop mechanics. I'm kind of realizing that with 40 factions, more or less, I'd need to do a tabletop factions video every week and multiple on some weeks to keep up to date with the CODIS's release. So I'll do them all as I please, but I won't do all of them. But I still want to talk about the Xenos. So we'll be uh, talking about the book from February 28th, 2006. Lord, this book can join the army. But this book is Xenology. It's a Warhammer book, not really a novel, written as though it's a file amalgam of various different Magos biologists. Now, I should point out something. Biologist is not exactly a biologist. It seems it's more military applicant, figuring out how certain things work in order to best hurt them. For example, the Gravis Armored Apothecary Biologist released in 10th edition. I'm seeing some reports that the design first came in in 1998, but I don't know about that. The Apothecary Biologist does not heal. Well, not well. It essentially gives lethal hits and makes his boys more steadfast when it, he gets into melee. But that's not the subject for this video, it'll be the contents of the book itself. This book is filled with files from various Magos biologists of the Adeptus Mechanicus, researching alien creatures and how to better face them in combat out in the field. Some of the creatures in this book are what you'd expect. Eldar, Tau, Crude, Orcs, you know, the usual suspects. But then there's some things, aliens of unknown origin, some creatures we've never heard of in any other book, and other such things. First one is something called the Histrio Tragodus? A Thyrus warrior, gender unknown. It goes into details about how the biology of the creature works. A protein-filled outer layer that's rather brittle, a sensory organ similar to the human brain, a lot of little details are in the wording itself of the documentations including questions, observations, and beliefs of such things. For example, Detail L on this very creature states that with certain muscles, the body would allow it to reflect light waves of certain intervals in order to camouflage itself. It also suggests a degree of intelligence. Let's talk about some of the fun things in this book. A few pages later, there's the Tau. Genus Tau. Species Tau. Ethereal cast. 61 years of age on the world of Tau, which is equivalent to 49 on Earth or Terra, depending on, you know, how you want to go about it. Gender Female. It points out that the brain of the Tau is different than the human's brain, but not much different. There's apparently some hair-like appendages on the brain in order to give more brain space, possibly for natural psychics or mental control over the lower castes of Tau. 
That hole in the middle of the Tau head, that's their nose. They apparently also can't see that well and locate primarily through their sense of smell. Tau are apparently almost blind without their helmets, which brings up their dead eye aim, really. Tau ribs don't go sideways like ours do. They go up and down. I believe that's a universal evolutionary trait that was developed for the same reason the air cast developed a gliding membrane, with their hands having three fingers and a thumb. Apparently, they have soft fingers and cloven hooves. Their organs are apparently padded with layers of fat, too. With bones, they don't have marrow. I wonder what their reproductive system is like. Tau don't have mammary glands, so do they lay eggs? I love the stories about these things, too, including the diamond organ above the nose hole that's on the ethereal. It's interesting to read about. Now we'll move on to Eldar. This one is one of the few that don't have a genus or species, as the Mechanicus doesn't recognize differences between Eldari, Eldari subfactions, and Drukari. Honestly, I think it's likely the difference between a man from the Bronx and a man from Detroit. Sure, there's probably some physical traits you could look for, but they're so specific it's impossible. The Eldar appear to have a lot of muscle on in their bodies, while their bones are surprisingly thin, but durable. Their skeletons seem to be built so their backbones have wing-like builds to them, likely in order to improve their ability to dance, dodge, and move. Apparently, they sort of have multiple rib cages in order to keep their organs in place while also having a flexible bending ability. Shows their ability to move and dodge and get around easily, given some books say that the footsteps of an Eldar on a roof sound like raindrops. Orcs are the next species in this book, and I think we're only halfway through the book. Honestly, maybe not even that. Orcus Nigra, essentially the orc war boss. I think of orcs with their giant teeth as being carnivores, but if we look at their lore, you read this book, they're apparently very omnivorous. Orc teeth and bones are stupid thick and stupid difficult to cut through. Their head shapes of everything created by the old ones seem to be pretty standard. Two eyes, a nose, a mouth. But the brain is also insanely dense too. I think the brain is so thick because orcs are a lot smarter than they come off as. Each one has an innate understanding of how technology works, some being better at utilizing it too. The Xenology book states that orcs are disease-ridden, their flesh and bones and organs filled with gross everythings. Their nerves and ears resemble that of Eldar, which implies that the old ones essentially just worked with one blueprint and just made little changes as they need. Apparently, their large, dense brains are purely animalistic, with almost nothing showing other matter like most other brains. This chapter is actually interesting. Orcs are such a cool thing to read about, but not deal with. Crute are the next pages, and this has a genus and species of Crute Nux aviana. So, as lizard-like as the Crute are, they're actually birds. Kind of neat, but I think we've talked enough about biology. Like I said, this book is 18 years old. 19, two weeks after my birthday. I don't think it's for sale anymore because Games Workshop is kind of iffy when it comes to book sales. Alright, I got your stuff packed. Are you done talking to yourself? Yeah, I guess so. Honestly, I don't know why I wanted to talk about this book. I've always had an interest in medical fields, 
I know most of these videos won't really get any view, but I like talking about it, so I'll keep talking. So, you don't plan on shutting up? Nope! Let's get going and shove off.